Hello everybody, welcome to today's tutorial. In this tutorial, I would like to show you how I will implement a simple light and dark mode theme. So it basically switches between light, basically white and dark. Um, this is very common nowadays with uh, big websites like Twitter and Facebook actually implementing this feature. Um, this is uh, how Twitter has implemented theirs. So they have three options, the default, the dim, and the lights out. The dim uh, should look something like this, and the lights are something like this. Um, in our own case, we would have just two options. Either it's dark, or it's basically light. So, all right, well, let's get to action. Um, I opened a, I created a new code pen and we have empty HTML, CSS, and we are going to start afresh. Um, I do not expect this to take uh, too many lines of code. Um, so as you can see, we have really two or three basic uh, tags. We have the label tag, the, the input tag for the checkbox, and then our paragraph tag. And that's really it, guys. Um, so, all right, I think the first thing that we need to do, let's go and get that. Let's go and implement the, these three tags that we have here. So the very first one is the label. Toggle, I think we call it toggle. And then we have the input. What kind of input? Check box. Um, for accessibility reasons, we need to connect this label to this input and way to do that is like this you have an attribute for um and just give it any name i'm going to call it switch and on the input you have an id with the same name switch um so this basically connects this to the tag and the input for people that cannot see, but they only they are screen readers, it helps them to to navigate the web. The web. All right, so we have implemented the toggle title and the checkbox. Next, we need to have implement this, um, and the way I did that was using the paragraph tag. All right, let's go and copy the dummy text and paste it right in between our paragraph tag. All right, guys, that is really it on the HTML side for now. Um, let's go to the CSS side and start implementing. Now, the way this works is using or well, the way I implemented mine was using what is known as the CSS variable. CSS variables. Now, how you start CSS variable is having a root and within that root, having all your variables. What you need to repeat if this doesn't make sense, um, let's let's go on as we type, as we implement this. I Hopefully that will make sense. All right. So the first thing we need, right, is we need to change the background color. If you notice, when I click this, the background color changes from a white to black. So let's have that variable. 
So dash, this is how you do it, dash dash, um, the name of the variable, bg for background, color. And initially, when you go to the side, it's white. The next variable that we need is the text color. If you notice, this text color is white. And now it's black. So we need that, uh, we need to handle that as well. Text color black. All right. Now, so we have our variables. Now we need to add that to the HTML body because that's what we need to change. We need to change the whole HTML, um, anything in the HTML tag needs to have either white or black background. But you might say, well, I can't see any HTML tag. Here, um, that is because CodePen by default hides all of the HTML, like uh, like the HTML tag. So ideally, you would have something like this, and then before that, or no, after that, you would have. Um, the body, uh, the head, the header, the head, no head, um, all of that. But, uh, and then you have the body and so on and so forth. But by default, CodePen hides that. It's still there though, it's, it is still there. Um, so the way I implemented this is, when you switch between dark and light mode, I change the entire HTML, anything inside of the HTML tag changes. And you could implement it differently. You could have just the body tag to change, really anything you want changed. So I could have just the body, which is also there, but hidden by default. Um, so in my own case, I want to have the whole HTML tag changed. So the background color is what I want to change. And the way you write it is this, dash dash BG color. And that's really it. Um, background color should be what whatever this variable stands for. Um, let me show you something to just check to make sure that our variable is working. Let's turn it to red. You see the whole of uh, the background color changed. So it's really working. If we change it to green, that also works. So let's change it back to white, the way we had it earlier. Now, we also want not only the background color to change, but the text color as well. If you remember when it's dark, the text color is white. So let's change that. The name of the property is color, and then we'll have, we start with var, open bracket, and add the name of the variable. Nothing changes here because the name of the variable is black, but let's change it to red and see. There we go. Um, our variable is working, guys. So this is how you implement 
uh, variables uh, using uh, in CSS. So that's really what we need, guys, on this end. Um, now let's go. For now, as you can see, it doesn't do anything, right? Um, we need JS. We need JavaScript to be able to do that. So the way I would do this, right, is to call a function. To call a function when that will run when I click this. When I click this, the moment I click, I want a function to run. So the way you, you start this is we need the HTML. We are back to, that, to our HTML again. We need to do it here. Um, that's one way to do that. Okay, so on click because we want something to happen when I click on the checkbox. Well, what do I want to happen? I want uh, this function to get called. Apply theme color. That's what that's uh, the function that I need called. So let's copy this function, at least the name, and then go to our JavaScript file and uh, work with it. Function, paste. So yeah, that is our function. So we need to write what happens um, when uh, this function is called. So, basically, right, we need to, the way I approach this is this. When this is checked, I want the black, I want the background color to be black when it's checked. So, um, when checked, background color should be black. So let's keep that at the back of our mind. Um, now, how do I tell? How can I know using JavaScript when this button is checked? Uh, we we use the event dot target dot checked to know that. So let's store whatever this is inside a variable. So var let's call it uh, is checked. Um, let me console and show you what uh, we are getting, if this is actually working. Let me open my console, erase uh, all the errors from previous, um, yeah, I need to, yeah, because the Okay, I'm going to check it and then go to the console and check, uh, and then check to see what happens, okay? Check once, uncheck. So I check and uncheck it. So I expect it to be true and false. Here we go, true and false. The reason why I can have both is because I have enlarged the screen. Um, obviously, apparently I can have both at the same time. Um, so that is really it. Let me clear and show you again. Let me close that. Checked. That should be true. Unchecked. That should be false. Check. True. Unchecked. Force. Force. False. So true. False. True. False. So yeah. So it's checking. We are able to monitor 
the state and catch it, the state of this check button. So now, really, is to do our logic. If is checked is equals to true, what do I want to happen? Well, I've mentioned when when checked, BG should be black. So the background color of our HTML element should be black. Well, let's do that. Let's get the HTML. Let's get the root HTML. Uh, so document that document element. Now this document element refers to the root of the HTML skeleton. The root of the HTML skeleton, the very first tag is the HTML. Now, if this doesn't make sense, um, I will not worry. Um, let's say we are using the body. Um, actually, yeah. Um, in either case, right, you can go and read up on it, but this is what uh, document element, it grabs the root of the HTML skeleton. So, that style um that set property now the set property method takes two arguments one the property that we want to change and the property that we want to change is the background color the second uh, parameter that it takes is the value. We want to change it to black. So when it's checked, we want to change the background color to black. Well, let's see if that is actually working. Tada, it works. But if we uncheck it, nothing happens because we have not written that logic yet. Okay? So we need to write that. Um, so if else, so if it is not true, it's false, right? So that means if it is not, if it is not checked, we want it to be white so document that document element the the root element of the html skeleton that set property uh, the set property method or function takes two arguments two parameters uh, the first one is what we want to change well we 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 want to change the background color to be white, right? When is when it is not checked? Let me make sure. Not checked. So when it is not checked, that means at this state we want the background color to be white. So yeah, let's test that our uh, function. Checked, I expect it to be black background, unchecked to be white. Um, but yeah, that's really um, what our function, that's what we made our function and that's what it's doing. But we're not done yet, right? If it's black, I don't really see the text anymore. So that means I need to make the text white. When the background color is black. So when the background color is black, right here, I need to make 
the text color to be white. So I'm going to go to the root element because that's what we are manipulating. That set property. Um, this set property takes two uh, parameters. The first parameter is the is that the property that we want to, that we want to change, and we want to change this property. So we can actually just copy and paste. So paste it. Well, we want to change it to white. Oops. Yeah, it's just too. Yeah, it just it just wraps. Nothing wrong. Okay, so let's see what happens. There we go. The background color changes to black, and the text color changes to white. But there's a problem. Once we go back to white background. The text is still white. So that means we need to come here and implement that as well and make it black. Dot style, dot set property. Text color. We want it to be black. All right, so let's see the outcome of our function. Um, perfect. This is exactly the effect we want to achieve. When it's checked, background color is black, test color is white. When it's unchecked, it's the opposite. So, yeah, guys, we are really done. I will just do a little bit of cleanup. Um, but uh, that is really it, guys. Um, here, right? We'll clean this up a little bit. We could do. We could just um erase the the equal to when it's the same as true, and it's really the same. As you can see, it's the same. So, um, but yeah, I like uh, the way it is right now. Um, yeah, that's really it, guys. That's really it. We have implemented a simple, you know, I didn't say it's easy. Um, I have issues with the word simple because what is simple to me might not be simple to you. What is simple to you might not be simple to me. Um, in this sense, uh, what I mean by simple is like, um, like not to, there isn't much to it. There isn't much to it. We don't have this check button having um, a complicated uh, CSS that we need to style. And you can really style this um, in a way that uh, it will look nice, nicer than this, but at least you have the basics of uh, how to do this. Thank you very much, uh, guys, for uh, for checking this tutorial out. I really hope um, you begin one or two things. Uh, if you have any variations of how you implement this, uh, please let me know below. If you have a link, I will appreciate it. I will go and check it. Um, I will leave this link below so you could have a reference. Thank you, and I will see you in the next tutorial.